My name is Zen Cheng. In 2001, I started an appliance repair shop. In the beginning, I just wanted to be a decent person and run an honest business. I didn't want to rip anyone off. I felt that it would bother my conscience. But after being busy for a time, the money I earned was enough to cover family expenses, but not any savings. Sometimes my monthly income was no better than an average worker. And so my wife often gave me a hard time about that. We depend on trade for money, but when it's time to get money from customers, you only think of them. If you won't ask for more money from them, who's going to put money in your pocket? Hey, Cheng. Hmm. You've got a lot of really great skills. You can fix things, but it's your fault if you're not making much. Now I'm telling you. People always have money inside of their pockets. And if you rob them, then that's illegal. But if you find a way for them to voluntarily hand over their money, that's called being skillful and smart. You fix things with your skill. You should understand your skill and how to apply it. A man without a second income will never get rich. We live in the age of money. You can do anything with enough cash. Money doesn't solve everything, but without any, you'll solve nothing. That's right. People without a skill have a hard time scraping by. You have a skill. Why not apply yourself and make more money? You're too set in your ways. <sighs> Jiaming, nudge him in the right direction. I contemplated my wife's advice and my brother-in-law's brilliant idea. They really had a point. I was skilled, but not making more money. Was I just good for nothing? But I was still dead set against ripping off customers because my conscience would never get past that. There was an electronics repair shop run by Mr. Keon near my store. He didn't have much of a grasp on repairs and could only fix very simple problems. But he always placed huge ads in front of his shop. The ads said, we fix all kinds of appliances. Our skills are top notch. It all seemed very impressive. In this manner, many people had been fooled by him. As he worked, he handled the easy stuff on his own, but the tough jobs he sent to other repair shops, making a tidy profit as a middleman. He made a lot of extra income doing this. One time, Mr. Kian and I were eating in a small restaurant. We chatted about how to be successful in business. Mm. Mm. Uh. Chang, you and I both have repair shops, but I'm making more than you. And do you know why that is? If the TV's high voltage connector cap was burned out, how much would you charge to replace it? That's an easy one. 20 or 30 yuan would be enough. Oh, 20 or 30 yuan? Oof. You can't do business that way. No wonder you're not making more money. I see you're a good guy, so I'll be honest with you. For this sort of problem, I'll swap out the entire high voltage assembly. But the high voltage assembly is I'll fine. swap it out anyway. It's not necessary. I'll swap it out. If you don't swap out some parts, how are you going to charge more money? If you swap them out, you could charge an extra tens or hundreds of yuan. This trick goes a lot further than just technical skill, you know? It is just a diversion. Customers don't know our skill. They'll never know. It's up to you to decide if you want them to pay you more. Huh? This is a quick way to earn money. But isn't it ripping off our customers? Oh. I can't have that on my conscience. Conscience? How much will you get for a pound of conscience? No one talks about conscience now. Will conscience fill your belly? Can you spend it like money? You know, Zen Cheng, you're not seeing the ways of the world. Ours is a cash society. Money is everything. Everyone focuses on making money. Mm. 
The communists even believe this now. No matter if it's a cat, white or black. As long as it catches mice, it's a good cat. So whoever's earning money is therefore worth their salt. If you can't make any money, being a good person won't get you anywhere. No one will respect you. Without money, everything is more difficult. But with it, you just say the word. Everyone is more than happy to help. So what do you think? Am I right? You're right. After hearing Mr. Kian's enlightening views, I thought deeply about it. This is the type of world we live in now. People run all kinds of scams to make a quick buck, and no one talks about integrity. What good would it do if I were the only honest one? What's more, my being honest in pursuing my business has not been advantageous. People who are in the same business as me are living a good life. Their families all live comfortably, eat well, and wear nice clothes. It seems I have been too set in my ways. I have to start thinking of ways to make more money, to make life better for my family. Okay, Mr. Kian, one day I'll drop by your place and see how you do it. From that point on, I began to study the success others had experienced in my line of work. I had my misgivings, but in order to make more money, I couldn't dwell on so many things. I just had to bite the bullet and put theory into practice. One day, a customer came in to have an appliance repaired. And when I took apart the piece that wasn't working, I also opened up some parts that were working fine. I did this in order to misdirect the customer and to make her think that so many things were wrong with it. This way, I can use that as an excuse to charge her more. The old saying, guilty consciences make men cowards, is completely true. At first, I was nervous. My heart was beating very fast and I was worried that the customer would see through me. I thought, if she figures out that I pulled such a stunt and exposes it on the spot, where would I hide my face? I'd have to crawl into a little hole. Customers don't know our skill. They'll never know. It's up to you to decide if you want them to pay you more. I forced myself to stay cool. After I swapped out the bad parts, I plugged the device in and tested it. It worked fine. When the customer asked me how much for the repair, I thought to myself, I can't be as soft-hearted as I was before. And then, with hardened heart, I charged 50% more than before. After saying that, I thought to myself, will she complain that I asked for so much money? If she haggled over the price, I'd give her all the reasons why the price went up. If that didn't work, I'd give her a discount. I never thought the customer would say nothing and just hand the money over to me. Only after the customer had carried away the appliance could I finally let out a sigh of relief. I realized that my face and back were covered in sweat. The first time cheating a customer, I felt an indescribable sense of unease. But when I saw that I had made more money, that feeling of unease was replaced with the joy of success. From then on, I thought of every possible tactic to pull the wool over my customers' eyes to get more money from them. At first, even though I felt some blame in my conscience, I nonetheless quietly urged myself onward. A small mind makes not a gentleman, and a great man must be ruthless at times. If I want to earn more money, I would have to use strategy. Besides, everyone does this. One more wouldn't make a difference. Over time, with the enthusiastic help from others in my line of work, along with my own hard work, my skill and technique in earning money became more and more refined. I learned how to read people and make adjustments to my technique on the fly. Depending on the type of customer I saw, I would employ various techniques. 
If they looked like they were rich, then I would flatter them. I'd say whatever was needed to satisfy their vanity. This was how I set up the basis for asking them for more money. If customers waited in the shop for their appliances to be repaired, I'd make a big to-do about looking busy with a difficult repair and draw up the time a bit. This way, they would often pay more of their own volition. At times, I had to work a little harder for the shrewd customers. I would have to use special techniques to deceive them. In most of those cases, I think of ways to get them to leave their appliances at the shop to pick up on another day. Then I could just fix the bad part and be done with it. And when they came to pick it up, I'd explain that there were several things wrong with it. I was not only making more money, I was also at ease. So tell me, what kind of problems did you find? Can you fix it today? My grandson's waiting to watch TV. Oh yes, ma'am. The motherboard is bad, and I cannot fix it in a short time. Why not pick it up tomorrow? And so on. This is the way I plotted and schemed to cheat customers and earn more money. Even though I was making more money than before, and I was living better, I was nonetheless rather unhappy. When I thought of all the debased and shameful things I had done, I felt awful inside. I felt empty and ill at ease. Sometimes I thought, go back to being honest. Don't keep playing these shameful tricks on people. As the saying goes, what goes around comes around. One should avoid getting in too deep, lest consequences arise. But once I thought of the easy money, I lost all of that resolution. And just as I fell deeper and deeper into a quagmire of sin, God's salvation came to me. One day, my sister came in to share the gospel. She explained how heaven and earth and all the creatures in it were created by God and how humans were also created by God. How when God first created humanity, people had a heart and a spirit. They had normal humanity with a conscience and reason, and they were able to listen to God's word and fear him. They had God's care and protection and dwelt in his blessings. But afterward, they were tempted by the devil Satan and turned their backs on God. Thereafter, mankind no longer listened to God and they became estranged from him and they denied him. God was no longer with them, and they fell into darkness. For several thousand years, Satan kept corrupting mankind. Mankind became worse and worse and fell deeper into evil. It became easier and easier for them to adapt to this evil society. Even though people had enough wealth, their consciences, reason, dignity, and integrity disappeared little by little. Mankind's spirit became ever more empty and all kinds of suffering arose. In the depths of people's hearts, they yearn for a good life, and they hope to break away from the depravity, suffering, and emptiness of their lives, but they are unable to. They have no choice but to remain trapped in this world. They live an empty life year after year, wasting away their own life for nothing. After I had heard my sister's fellowshipping several times, I felt that what she said was factual. She had described humanity's circumstances exactly, and I was deeply moved. I was inspired, and the more I listened, the more I became interested. Things will become much clearer after we read a few passages of God's Word. Almighty God says, Adam and Eve, created by God in the beginning, were holy people. Which is to say, whilst in the Garden of Eden they were holy, untainted with filth. They were also faithful to Jehovah and knew nothing of the betrayal of Jehovah. This is because they were without the disturbance of the influence of Satan, were without Satan's poison, and were the purest of all mankind. They lived in the Garden of Eden, undefiled by any filth, unpossessed by the flesh and in reverence of Jehovah. Later, when they were tempted by Satan, they had the poison of the serpent and the desire to betray Jehovah. 
and they lived under the influence of Satan. His thoughts were filled with evil and filth, without good or holiness. Is this not Satan? Satan corrupts people through the education and influence of the national governments and the famous and great. Their lies and nonsense have become man's life and nature. Everyone for himself and the devil take the hindmost is a well-known satanic saying that has been instilled into everyone and become the human life. There are some other words of life philosophy that are also like this. Satan educates people through each nation's fine traditional culture and causes humanity to fall into and be engulfed in an expansive abyss of destruction. And in the end, people are destroyed by God because they serve Satan and resist God. Sis, this is really profound stuff. Mm -hmm. That's right. Indeed, I have never heard it before. Okay, let's watch two video readings of God's words so we can understand them better. Great. Satan uses these social trends to lure people one step at a time into a nest of devils so that people caught up in social trends unknowingly advocate money and material desires as well as advocate wickedness and violence. Once these things have entered man's heart, what then does man become? Man becomes the devil, Satan. This is because of what psychological leaning in the heart of man. What does man advocate? Man begins to like wickedness and violence. They do not like beauty or goodness, much less peace. People are not willing to live the simple life of normal humanity but instead wish to enjoy high status and great wealth, to revel in the pleasures of the flesh, sparing no effort to satisfy their own flesh, with no restrictions, no bonds to hold them back. In other words, doing whatever they desire. In this way, man becomes more and more what? More and more evil arrogant, condescending, selfish, and malicious. There is no longer any affection between people, no longer any love between family members, no longer any understanding between relatives and friends. Human relations have become full of cheating, full of violence. Every single person wants to use cheating means and violent methods to live in amongst their fellow man. They lie, cheat, and become violent in order to seize their own livelihood. They win their positions and obtain their own profits using violence, and they do anything they want using violent and evil ways. Is this humanity not terrifying? Man walked through the ages with God, yet man knows not that God rules the fate of all things and living beings, or how God orchestrates and directs all things. This is something that has eluded man since time immemorial to the present day. As for the reason why, it is not because the ways of God are too elusive, or because the plan of God has yet to be realized, but because the heart and spirit of man are too distant from God. Therefore, even as man follows God, he unknowingly remains in the service of Satan. None actively seek out the footsteps or appearance of God, and none wish to exist in the care and keeping of God. Rather, they are willing to rely on the corrosion of Satan and the evil one in order to adapt to this world 
and to the rules of life the wicked mankind follows. At this point, the heart and spirit of man are sacrificed to Satan and become its sustenance. Moreover, the human heart and spirit become a place in which Satan can reside and a fitting playground for it. In this way, man unknowingly loses his understanding of the principles of being human and of the worth and purpose of human existence. The laws from God and the covenant between God and man gradually fade away in man's heart, and man no longer seeks or pays heed to God. As time passes, man no longer understands why God created man, nor does he understand the words that come from the mouth of God or realize all that is from God. Man begins to resist the laws and decrees from God. The heart and spirit of man become deadened. God loses the man of his original creation and man loses the root of his beginning. This is the sorrow of this mankind. Sun Sheng, Xiao Ying. After hearing Almighty God's word, do you know a bit more about how Satan corrupted mankind? And do you understand why the world is so evil and so dark? Yes, we know a bit a more. more. For thousands of years, Satan has been using atheism, the theory of evolution, materialism, and other evil doctrines to deceive and poison man. This made them blindly believe and worship all kinds of devils and great people and apply these people's fallacies and lies to their lives. Fallacies and lies? Hmm. It's just like the sayings. There is no God, there is no Savior. Man's fate is in his own hands. Everyone for himself and the devil take the hindmost. You can do anything if you have the cash. A man will do anything to get rich. A small mind makes not a gentleman. And a great man must be ruthless at times. After mankind became acquainted with these fallacies and lies, they began to deny God's dominion and to believe there was no God. Mankind became terribly egotistical, selfish, lawless, greedy, crooked, and deceitful. They worshiped at the altar of money and power and began to pursue anyone or anything that involved money. People became slaves to money they deceived and fought each other for money, fame, and status. They did anything to achieve their ends and even committed all manner of evil to do so. Mothers, fathers, sons and daughters, even husbands and wives deceived and betrayed one another. They lived by their corrupt satanic disposition. No one spoke of conscience or reason. No one talked about being honest. Society fell into deeper decay day by day, as did morality. People were vicious to each other. You see, when we live in such a dark world, how could we have true happiness? Could we be happy? No. Man is distant from God and has rejected him, and is unable to be happy. Mankind is only deceived, corrupted, and trampled by Satan. This is the source of the suffering we experience in our lives. That's right. Mm. So now God has come to do his salvation work. He utters the truth which shall cleanse and save mankind. If we truly accept God's work and read his word every day, then we can understand the truth. We'll see through Satan's tricks that corrupt humanity and will not be deceived by it. If we live by God's words, we can escape the suffering Satan has brought and walk the true path of life. Gaining God's praise and blessings is the only way to have a truly happy life. Hmm, that kind of life sounds a lot more relaxing and happy. Yes. Sis, hearing Almighty God's word and what you just told us has really moved me. In the last few years, I have made more money in my business. And yes. materially, we're doing better than ever before. 
but in my heart, I felt ever more empty and pained. Yes, but that is because I relied on Satan's rules to live and I didn't believe in God. Thinking back to when I first opened my shop, I held to the standards of being a person, using my conscience to earn money. But over time, the influences of society began to seep in. As time passed, I felt that having a good conscience couldn't bring money or make me rich. I believed in sayings like, everyone for himself and the devil take the hindmost. A man with one income will never get rich. A horse starved of hay won't gain weight. And a small mind makes not a gentleman and a great man must be ruthless at times. In this way, I gradually lost sight of my own conscience and set aside my own guiding principles. I see, I've made money on that. But when I think back on the mean and shameful things that I did, I feel uneasy inside. Sis, it's exhausting to live this way. But today I understand that it was Satan who was harming me. Yes. Were it not for Almighty God's word, revealing the root of mankind's corruption and degeneration, I would have never known the truth of my corruption by Satan. Things will become clearer after we read God's word. In the following days, I read a lot of Almighty God's words and attended meetings to fellowship on the truth. It gave me an understanding of Almighty God's work of the last days. I came to understand that this work was based on the foundation of the Lord Jesus' redemption work, and it was a higher stage of His work. In the Age of Grace, the Lord Jesus did the redemption work, limited to forgiving mankind of its sins, it did not include the thorough cleansing and salvation of mankind of the last days. Almighty God has come to issue forth all the truths that will cleanse and save mankind. He has revealed the truth of mankind's corruption and the substance of their nature. He will change and cleanse mankind's corrupt disposition. In the end, He will completely save mankind from Satan's domain so that mankind will be gained by God and allowed entry to His kingdom. When I came to understand these truths, I vowed, I must properly follow Almighty God and pursue the truth, and I must seek to change my disposition and live like a real man to satisfy God. Almighty God says, you ought to know that God likes an honest man. God has the substance of faithfulness, and so His Word can always be trusted. Furthermore, His actions are faultless and unquestionable. This is why God likes those who are absolutely honest with Him. Honesty means to give your heart to God, never to play Him false in anything, to be open with Him in all things, never hiding the truth, never to do that which deceives those above and deludes those below, and never to do that which merely ingratiates yourself with God. In short, to be honest is to refrain from impurity in your actions and words, and to deceive neither God nor man. Behaving like a normal human being is to speak with coherence. Yes means yes, no means no. Be true to the facts and speak appropriately. Don't cheat, don't lie. Zhen Cheng, please keep reading. Yes, okay. My kingdom requires those who are honest, not hypocritical and not deceitful. Aren't the sincere and honest people in the world unpopular? I am completely opposite as it. It is acceptable for the honest people to come to me. I delight in this kind of person. I also need this kind of person. This is precisely my righteousness. Those deceitful men who act one way before the face of others and another way behind their backs are not willing to be perfected. They are all sons of perdition and destruction. They belong not to God, but to Satan. 
They are not the kind of man chosen by God. Hmm. I'll read the next passage. Yes, okay. How one's fate will work out in the end hinges upon whether he has an honest and blood-red heart and whether he has a pure soul. If you are someone who is very dishonest, someone with a heart of malice, and someone with an unclean soul, then the record of your fate is certainly in the place where man is punished. If you claim to be very honest, and yet never manage to act in accordance with the truth, or to speak a word of truth, then are you still waiting for God to reward you? Do you still hope for God to regard you as the apple of his eye? Isn't this a preposterous way of thinking? You deceive God in all things. So how can the house of God accommodate one such as you whose hands are unclean? Why does God want us to be honest people? Sen Cheng, Xiao Jing, do you know why? Why don't you tell us? God's word is very clear about this. I'll read it out loud. Here. God has the substance of faithfulness, and so his word can always be trusted. Furthermore, his actions are faultless and unquestionable. This is why God likes those who are absolutely honest with him. God possesses a faithful substance, so God likes honest people and hates the deceitful. We can see from God's word and his work that God's words are deeply heartfelt and honest words at all times, and that everything God does is very real. His sincerity and earnestness is free from any false pretense or deceit. God has this life substance, and this is what he has and is. Therefore, God asks that we be honest people, speak honestly and true. He also asks that we live as an image of truth. This is the great love and salvation that God grants us. That's, That's true. true. I remember what the Lord Jesus said. Truly, I say to you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. As little children? That refers to the purity and honesty of children. Yes. The book of Revelation says, But the fearful and unbelieving and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Almighty God also says, For I cannot bring my enemies and people reeking of evil on the model of Satan into my kingdom, into the next age. Sencheng, Xiaojing, do you understand what God is saying here? It is critically important to be honest people. It has a direct connection to our final home and conclusion. God is holy and righteous and wants to gain honest people. People that often lie and cheat, that carry a satanic disposition and resist God, they will be targets for elimination. God will absolutely not allow any crooked or unrighteous types of people to enter God's kingdom. Therefore, in order to achieve salvation and entry into God's kingdom, we must accept God's judgment of his words and pursue truth. We must cast off our corrupt disposition and be cleansed by God to become honest people. This is the only road to salvation. Mm, right. Almighty God's words have clearly stated the significance of being honest and how to be honest. Looking back at my own life, I conducted myself and lived based on satanic philosophies. I lied and deceived without even knowing it. Basically, I didn't know how to be a real person. I lived just for my reputation and vanity. No matter what I did, I had always put my own interests before others. With others, I practiced the principle of, if there's nothing in it for me, why bother? Many times I cheated and lied merely to satisfy the needs of the flesh. Even as I spoke, I put my intent and purpose in it. On the surface, everything sounded very nice, but inside I was guarded and calculating. It's something to think about, how our interpersonal relationships are carried out as if we are wearing a mask and no one knows what the other is thinking. Even relatives are taking advantage of one another and cheating one another.
No one is trustworthy. Yep, that's the way it is. It's like the Bible says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? What do you say about this kind of life? Is that what being a person is about? Oh, no, it really isn't. That's right. The Bible also says that the devil always lies and that lies are always of the devil. So when we see someone who often lies, if it's not the devil, what could it be? I often look back on these things. Why are we able to lie and cheat so much? That's right. Why is that? It's because lying is in our human nature. We can't control our lying, even if we wanted to. This satanic nature of lying is embedded deep inside of us. If someone tried their best not to lie, they'd still fail. Hmm. There's nothing we could do. That's right. So how do we solve this problem of lying to become honest people? On this issue, God's Word has already shown us the way. Only by accepting God's judgment and chastisement can man's cunning, lying nature be thoroughly cleansed. It's the only way to resolve mankind's problem with cheating and lying. Only by experiencing God's judgment can we meet the standards of being an honest person. It is very clear in our hearts that only an honest person is a real person. Being honest is the only way to meet God's intention. God asks that we be honest people, but crucially, we must give our hearts over to God. We must live for God and live for truth. We should speak with honesty and act with honesty in our real life and be forthright in our actions. Living in this way is the only way to be happy, at peace, and straightforward. The only way to have good character. The only way to get God's praise. When we have experienced God's judgment, we definitely undergo some change. We begin to be like an honest person. This is the effect of experiencing God's work. Amen. I am so grateful that Almighty God has led us on the right path of life. We can see clearly now that being an honest person is the way to be a person. In reading God's words and hearing their fellowship, I recognized the deep significance of being an honest person. Only an honest person can be a real person. In the following days, I saw brothers and sisters at church fellowship with open hearts as they discussed their own conditions. They laid bare the corrupt things they had revealed, the lies they had told, and the things they had done that were deceitful to God. They fellowshiped how to experience God's judgment. If a brother or sister had done something that hurt someone else, the others would fellowship based on God's word in order to help them, and help them understand the source of the problem, know God's intention, and seek the right principles and approach they should take. I felt that living like this is to truly be free. There were no more secrets or lies between people. You didn't have to be so guarded around people or worry that they were plotting against you. In the church, the more honest you were, the more respect you got from the other brothers and sisters, and the more you were promoted. If someone was deceitful, a cheater, and never expressed regret, and if they disturbed the church life, they would be abandoned by God's chosen people and expelled from the church. This is quite the opposite of life in the world. In the world at large, people who are honest and sincere are just not popular. Instead, whoever is the most shrewd and the most deceitful will prosper. The more crafty and underhanded people are, the more money they make and the more power they have. But in God's house, the opposite is true. In God's house, Christ carries authority, along with righteousness and truth. Only honest people can receive God's approval, gain His salvation, and be led by God into His kingdom. Now I know that God likes honest people. I should give my heart over to Him and accept God's scrutiny. I would not lie to people and I would not deceive God. I would be an honest person based on God's requirements. This is the only way to receive God's praise.
Honesty means to give your heart to God, never to play him false in anything, to be open with him in all things, never hiding the truth, never to do that which deceives those above and deludes those below, and never to do that which merely ingratiates yourself with God. In short, to be honest is to refrain from impurity in your actions and words, and to deceive neither God nor man. God's word is indeed the truth, and people should put it into practice. However, if I do business as an honest person, I'll lose quite a bit of money. But if I keep pulling all of my usual tricks, cheating customers, this does not meet God's intentions. So what should I do? Should I compromise somehow? When I interact with people in my life, I'm an honest person. But in my business life, I still act as I acted before. One day, a man came into the shop with a color TV, saying that the image was too dim. I checked it out and saw that the color picture tube was old and needed to be replaced. However, I didn't tell him that. Instead, I just upped the filament voltage in the picture tube. This way, it would work fine for a while, and I could swap out the tube later if problems arose. I could make 30 extra yuan in repair fees. Two weeks later, sure enough, the TV had problems. The man said I hadn't fixed it right and brought it back for me to fix again. I told him that the tube was old and that it needed to be swapped out. I never thought that the man would see through my trick. He paid me after I replaced the tube, but reduced the payment by 30 yuan. He called me out and said, Hey buddy, you've got to be honest. Don't be so greedy. I saw that my little trick had been exposed, and I felt a little ashamed at that. But I didn't give it much thought and went on with my life. A while later, a lady came in with a broken microwave. After inspecting it, I saw that it was just a minor part that was bad. First, I thought I'd just repair it and take an appropriate repair fee. But I thought about how well her family was doing financially. It wouldn't be a big deal if I asked her for a bit more money. Why waste an opportunity? But I never expected that the jig would be up in a few days' time. Hey, hello, ma'am. Still going to the park in this rain? Oh, it's Mr. Zen. Well, you took a pretty penny to fix that microwave of mine. You should pay attention to your conscience. Heaven can see all that a man does. Grandma, Grandma, let's okay, go. Okay, we're go. going now. I felt really disgusted with myself when I heard her criticism. And I thought of the man from the other day who also called me out. In my heart, I clearly felt that God's judgment and chastisement came upon me. At the time, I hadn't felt the full impact. Afterward, I read God's word. No matter what you are doing, no matter how big the matter is, and regardless of whether you are fulfilling your duty in God's family or whether it is your private matter, you must consider whether this matter conforms with God's will whether this matter is something a person with humanity should do, and whether or not what you are doing would make God happy. You need to think about these things. If you do this, then you are a person who seeks the truth and a person who truly believes in God. If you devoutly treat every matter and every truth this way, then you will be able to transform your disposition some people think that they are doing something personal, so they ignore the truth, thinking, this is a private matter and I will do it as I wish. They do it in whatever way makes them happy and in whatever way is advantageous to them. They don't give the slightest amount of consideration to how it affects God's family and they don't consider whether or not it is in accordance with the order of the saints. Finally, when they are finished with the matter, they are dark inside and uncomfortable. They are uncomfortable, but they don't know how it happened. Is this not a worthy retribution?
if you do things that are not approved by God, then you have offended God. If people are not fond of truth and frequently do things based on their own will, then they will frequently offend God. This kind of person is usually not approved by God in what they do, and if they do not turn back, then they will not be far from punishment. If people are not fond of truth and frequently do things based on their own will, then they will frequently offend God. Whenever you do anything, you must examine whether your motivations are right. If you are able to act according to the requirements of God, then your relationship with God is normal. This is the minimum criterion. If, when you examine your motivations, there emerge those that are incorrect, and if you are able to turn your back on them and act according to the words of God, then you will become someone who is right before God which will show that your relationship with God is normal and that all you do is for the sake of God and not for yourself. Whenever you do or say anything, you must put your heart right, be righteous, and not be led by your emotions or act according to your own will. These are the principles by which believers in God conduct themselves. After reading God's word, I really felt that God's Spirit was scrutinizing me. Everything I had thought and pondered, things I'd never shared with anyone, were revealed to me in great detail by God's Word. He is a true and living God. I now understood from God's Word that God asks us to give our hearts to Him and be conscientious in how we treat every truth. Matters in God's house or in our private affairs should be handled in accordance with God's requirements. In the process, we should turn our backs on our incorrect intents and accurately put the truth into practice. This was the way to meet God's intentions. But I was inconsistent and arbitrary in practicing truth in real life. When I saw that being honest in the church pleased God and the brothers and sisters, I wanted to do so. In my business, I felt that being honest would mean I made less money, my profits would be hurt. I wasn't willing to do that. I was always thinking of myself and anything that would harm my interests, and so I put truth, God's intentions, and God's requirements off to one side. I let my own will have its way and did whatever I wanted. Could I even be considered a believer? How was I different from an unbeliever? God is holy and righteous. In order to cleanse and change me, God used the customers to expose me. This allowed me to examine myself and understand my deceitful nature. I saw that all I had done would not meet God's scrutiny. All I'd done was to deceive God and cheat people and was despised by God. God had set this up to teach and to discipline me he made me understand the corrupt nature within me and also to understand Him. This was the most practical way for God to save me. O oh, Almighty God, even though I believe in You, my heart has no place for You. I do not put Your words into practice. I'm still living based on Satan's rules. O oh, God, I want to repent to You. I want to be conscientious about being an honest person. No matter what, I am willing to put your words into practice. Oh God, please examine me and guide me. One afternoon, a couple of young folks brought in a monitor that needed to be repaired. While doing my repairs, I heard them outside the shop whispering, if I knew that place would be no good, I shouldn't have brought it there. That's right. I think this guy might do a good repair job. Right? They've wasted two days of my time, you know? When I heard them talking, I thought to myself, in this situation, 
other repairmen would really take these guys for a ride. After doing my repair, it would be no problem getting an extra 20 or 30 yuan from them. It would be a shame not to grab the money that was there for the taking. I could just be an honest person next time. If I didn't put truth into practice this time, God wouldn't really be bothered. But I thought about the vow I had made before God, and I remembered God's word. If people are not fond of truth and frequently do things based on their own will, then they will frequently offend God. This kind of person is usually not approved by God in what they do, and if they do not turn back, then they will not be far from punishment. I felt that this was God's warning to me. If I intentionally did the wrong thing again and kept refusing to put truth into practice, as well as lying and cheating, then I would be cast off and I would be eliminated by God. Under the guidance of God's word, I made a vow to be an honest person. I could not fail as a witness again by bringing shame to God and offending him. After I was finished repairing the monitor, I charged them the normal fee of 30 yuan. When I saw the happy smiles on the customers' faces, I felt a sense of peace of mind. I felt that being straightforward like this was the only way to live as a genuine person. This was the first time I had felt that happiness that comes with being an honest person. In the days following that, I kept being honest. Surprisingly, I didn't expect that I would gain from doing so. Here you go. Oh, Have a drink thank of you. water. Could you set it to the side, please? I'll oh, drink sure. it in a bit. I'll thank set you. It there. Ma'am. Yes? The speaker is working well now. How much for it? 51 yuan. 51 yes. yuan? Oh. Here's a hundred. Keep the change. Oh, that's so much. Hey, that's really too much. Well, I'll tell you about it. Two days ago, I had asked someone else to come here and to fix it. He told me that the circuit board was bad and asked me to spend 400 yuan for him to oh. swap it. I thought it over and decided not to swap it out. Later on, a friend referred me to you, saying you run an honest shop and you are very conscientious and you don't try to scam money from people. And today, I see this was all true. When I heard her words, I thought, it's not because I'm a good person. It's because God's words have changed me, and it was His word that made me more like a real man should be. The more I practiced being honest according to God's word, the more my outlook became so much different than before. The suffering I felt and my depression gradually went away, and my mood got better and better. In the blink of an eye, I have been a believer in Almighty God for four years. I have experienced so many things that show me the value of being an honest person. When I first became a believer, I felt that being an honest person was incompatible with being a business person. I thought that way I'd not only make any money, I'd end up losing money too. But when I experienced the judgment of Almighty God's Word, and after I understood God's intention and practiced being honest, not only did I not post any losses, on the contrary, my business gradually grew with more customers. Some even came from far away to come to my shop. They said they were referred to me by friends or acquaintances. It was only because I pursued being an honest person in accordance with God's requirements. I tried to be trustworthy, conscientious, no longer cheated customers, no longer took money that went against my conscience. Instead, I gained my customers' trust. These were the blessings that God gave me. I saw this in God's word. Living in this world, living under the influence of Satan's corruption, it is impossible for people to be honest. But can we, having become honest, exist in this society and this world? Can we be segregated by them? No. 
we'll live as before. Because we don't rely on treachery to eat food or breathe air. Instead, we rely on the breath and the life given by God to live. It's just that today, the principles of our existence, the direction and aims of our existence, and the basis of our lives must all change. It's just that we are changing our method and the way we live in order to satisfy God and seek salvation. And this is totally unrelated to the food, clothing, and habitation of the flesh. This is our spiritual need. Is it not so? The future direction will be thus. Those who gain the utterances from God's mouth will have a path to walk on earth. And be they businessmen or scientists or educators or industrialists, those who are without God's words will have a hard time taking even a single step and will be forced to seek the true way. This is what is meant by, with the truth you'll walk the entire world. Without the truth, you'll get nowhere. Now I clearly see God's requirement is for us to be honest people and live by God's words. This is the only way for us to be real men. Only by living in accordance with God's words and with His truth, at all times and in all places, will we conduct ourselves with honor and magnanimity. In the past, I lived according to Satan's rules. I tricked and cheated people in order to take their money. That sort of life is so debasing and isn't how a person should be. I had experienced life without truth, and it offered only suffering. People without truth are pitiful indeed. I have now experienced God's work, and I know some truths. I have a new way to live. It is based on being an honest person in accordance with God's requirements and on striving to put God's word into practice. This allows me to gradually leave Satan's logic behind, no longer shackled by its rules. I no longer live for money or for the flesh. Instead, I pursue truth to satisfy God. In church, I do my duty as a being of creation. My spirit is happy, at ease, and I'm free. I walk the right path of life. Thanks be to Almighty God. Glory be unto Him. Those who love God are truly blessed. They honor God as great and bow to Him in worship. The bonds of the world are cast aside Their minds are set free In pain and hardship God's word is their guide Their hearts are at peace And can't fall back on it By understanding God's intent And fulfilling their souls enjoy peace. Those who love God are truly blessed. They enjoy God's word and are face to face with Him. Those who love God are truly blessed. Communing with God is true happiness. Of God are truly blessed. They can with their God and shine evil. Those who love God are truly blessed. They have God's blessing and He watches over.